Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. I have Mary Wilson joining me because we are taking a look at the Type 89 iGo, which is yet another one of the, uh, the Japanese tanks in, in her lineup here. So this is a medium tank. The Hago is a light tank. You get a little bit more room to work with in this one, but not much at the same time. Tell me a little bit about some of the updates you brought to this model. Yeah, so this was a model that was from an instruction book. Okay. Um, and I, Dan just kind of like handed me a, a rough prototype of it. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't even the version that was in the instruction book. He had forgotten oh. it was in there. <laughs> and I had no reason to think it was in there. So mm -hmm. I didn't ever actually look at that. Um, so I was just basing it off of like, an older model that Dan like handed to me. I was like, this is it, have fun. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and someone pointed that out online and I was like, oh, that's, didn't know that. Would have been right. nice to know. Yeah, Would right, have been that's nice. funny. <laughs> um, but some of the updates I got to bring to it, um, this one also, well, I guess, <laughs> this one, um, I really liked how these like gears were situated. It was nice that that was already done for me because mm -hmm. This tank is a little bit weird where the gears like uh, the <laughs> sat out in front of the hull. And so they, sure. they stick out there, um, which isn't necessarily like super easy to do with Lego when, mm -hmm. when there needs to be an access point. Um, so that is a technique that I kept, but I just want to point that out because I think it's a really like it works really well. <laughs> that is how you that is how you start that off. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like that kind of thing, I had to make sure that like that was staying the same. Um, but I got to add some details to the hull by uh, adding this as a slant instead of using like just staggered plates so it was a mm -hmm. little bit smoother. Um, also like brought some part updates by using a lot of uh, uh, wedge plates um, mm -hmm. just to like get some of those angles on there because like from top down like there's a lot of like angles I guess. Yeah <laughs> like, there is. Um, in various places too. So I wanted to make sure that was all well represented. Um, I got slammed to, to work on some of the, these like printed, we, there are like some sort of ports on it. Mm -hmm. And we actually like couldn't find like what they really were, but they were on every single um, picture of the tank. So we were like, well, it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, so he recreated that along with some rivets. Early air conditioning, right? Just flip it open yeah, and just cool yourself down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got to bring some of those details. We also have this uh, exhaust back here. Um, and that's a new printed piece. Uh, that that dome um, and that turned out really well. Fantastic. We got three of those. I love it. Uh, yeah, he did such a great job with mm -hmm. that. Uh, and then also for for the turret and this like front machine gun. So there are two extra guns on this, um, and so that was kind of fun to bring this at an angle and like I cleaned up the turret so it wasn't like kind of it was more like shaped and then placed on plates that didn't really fit it. But mm -hmm. again, with some of those newer wedge plates, I was able to like bring it so the shape um, made it all the way down to the hull, sure. if that makes sense. Yeah, a little more flush. Yeah, uh, so I was glad I was able to bring those updates to like clean that up a little bit. Um, this front gun is posable and I was able to add um, a hatch in the front, so your minifig can't like go all the way in, but you can stick his legs in. So that's it's fun. still fun, yeah, right. It's still, <laughs> still a play functional, feature. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a play feature, um, but yeah, uh, added some return rollers. I don't mm -hmm. know. People were excited to see People that. People were excited yep. for that. <laughs> Just trying to make it as accurate as possible, of yeah. course. So. Yeah. Well, a couple of things that I know catch my eye. First of all, that, that smaller main gun being able to elevate and depress is, is super awesome. There's studs going absolutely every direction on this thing, from <laughs> that front sloping armor to, to whatever we have going on back here. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it is kind of a, it'll be a fun build from that. And then the way the, the camo scheme is integrated in this, that brick build camo, especially what you've done like up on top with the, uh, with the turret and stuff. I mean, it just looks fantastic. It's a really cool you can see the stripes of it running yeah. through like that. That Usually it's just kind of like a, a jumble of bricks. This has some really nice symmetry to it. Right, I tried, I wanted it to be able to like look good from the side, but also from the top. Mm -hmm. um, and so I tried to like have those lines in there and try to mimic as the paint job in real life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think, I like, I like building with camo. I think that's fun. It gives you a little bit more like flexibility with some of like the part prices too, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, but also sometimes it can be a challenge when it's like big long pieces have to be one color. Like yeah. Hope it works <laughs> with what you're building. But yeah, it was great. 
yet another successful transition to the Lego medium. <laughs> um, so this kit also comes with our updated uh, Japanese tanker. So now we're going to flip things over to Landon uh, so we can talk a little bit more about the figure included with this kit. All right, so brand new Japanese tanker included with this kit. You were excited for this update because like you had said in previous times, we were kind of just like putting a rifleman or right, something in absolutely. there. And this, this was kind of a long time coming. Yeah. Um Obviously, a, st a step up compared to just a standard right. rifleman, and that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of what we did in the past. Just to when our when our minifigure produ production capabilities weren't quite there, mm -hmm. um, so now it's it's been great to have an opportunity to uh, to make a dedicated uh, Japanese tanker minifig. Mm -hmm. um, not a ton of images out there. Um, just the Japanese didn't use tanks quite in the numbers like we did. So, um, and it wasn't documented as well from what I could find. Super early war too when yeah. you're talking about yeah. these. I mean nothing nothing past even like 42. But um, it was, um, there were some some close-ups that I managed to find and the uniform itself is is very simple. So it seems like tanker uniforms tend to be more simple. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to carry um, supplies in their like back like a foot soldier would have to. Mm -hmm. And you, you probably wouldn't want a ton of gear uh, if you had to get out of the tank really quick. The stuff can snag and you can get caught. So the less on, on you, it tends to be better. What I found to be kind of unique about Japanese tankers, um, they seem to all be carrying their bayonets, and the commander would even have a, a katana oftentimes. Um, and the Japanese bayonets themselves are, 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 I think they're a bit longer than the average bayonet. Sure. Um, so that, that's just like, these dudes are all decked out with hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, essentially. Um, that, that was interesting. Um, over. Uh, Otherwise, on the minifigure, you have this, this interesting double belt configuration. One is for, um, specifically for that um, pistol holster, um, and then the other belt is actually uh, dedicated for the sword, or um, the bayonet in this okay. case. Um, so how'd you do that without it looking like a hiccup in the printer? So, because I mean, two belts on top of each other could, I feel like, could very easily look like someone went boom, to right. the, you know what I mean, and then it just started reprinting. So one, one is, um, slightly bigger, so I represented that kind of, um, I think that's below it, yes. So mm -hmm. there's a bigger belt that's, that's below, and then you have this smaller, um, I think that's the pistol belt, actually. Up on that's, top? That's above it, yeah. yeah so okay. they're kind of, they're staggered, mm -hmm. and they're also different sizes, so that kind of helps. That's gotta be tricky. Uh, different, slightly different leather tone to it as well, mm -hmm. just to create a little bit of subtle differences between the two. Um, so I think that turned out nice. Uh, the boots have a cool gradient going on to simulate that leather look to it. And then they have uh, leg wraps, which is also kind of an interesting thing for tankers. Normally, you wouldn't see necessarily a leg wraps. So. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's normally just a big coverall, which this suit probably is uh, a big coverall. Mm -hmm. um, they're just you know opting to tuck in the the pants with the with those leg wraps. Um, what else? Let me see if there's something on the front that I missed. Uh, again, a very simple uniform, just that one solitary square pocket on the side, mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of that kind of wraps it up. But um, Overall, I think it goes well with the uh, with the tank. So yeah, absolutely, straight, cleaned, and, and, and streamlined, and also has that uh, you can see kind of the texture details from from whatever the actual fabric is. But uh, a, a welcome addition to really something Brickmania needs to have. Sure, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. You gotta have a Japanese tanker. Absolutely, because we're we're gonna keep making Japanese tanks. So so very very cool. Anything else you want to cover on this? Thing? I think that covers it all. All right. So that is the designer studio for the Type eighty nine Haga or uh, the Type eighty nine I go. That was blend together for me, featuring that brand new tanker. Thank you for watching.